Alrighty, welcome back everyone to our Red Dead Redemption 2 Every Horse series. This is the Sorrel Suffolk Punch. Um, so we're just moving right along with the series. Um, I was able to play, I've actually been playing a little bit more, you know, than I than I have the past few weeks. So I was able to get this horse up to max bonding fairly quickly. Um, I have been playing with a, a friend, so I've been able to do a lot of missions, bounties, uh, you know, hunting, all sorts of stuff. So I feel like I've given this horse... Um, Kind of or gotten gotten enough experience with this horse to feel confident in um, doing the review. So, uh, like I do with every video, let's go over the stats really quick. Um, so the Suffolk Punch, the two different coats of the Suffolk Punch, both have the same stats. They have base stats of three health, uh, four stamina, three speed, and two acceleration. And then at max bonding, they are six health, seven stamina, six speed, and four acceleration. Um, so this is the second and last of the Suffolk Punch horses. Um, like I did with the previous Suffolk Punch, I want to share a couple things that I learned about the Suffolk Punch. Um, and again, like I mentioned before, this is literally just from reading the Wikipedia page. So take it with a you know a grain of salt. But um, reading about the Suffolk Punches, I was interested in their actual size because I mentioned in the previous video that some of the um, some of the Suffolk punches just looked absolutely massive. Um, and you know, when you think of a big horse, you typically think of someone who's not necessarily like an equestrian person and, you know, might only know just a tiny bit about horses. They might think of like a Clydesdale. Um, so I was actually curious about, you know, their, their height compared to a Clydesdale horse. Um, and it actually mentioned that in the Wikipedia page. It talked about how, um, this horse, it specifically mentioned this horse is smaller than, um, other English breeds, which are the Clydesdale and the Shire. Um, it said they stand anywhere from 165 to 178 centimeters, which if you go in between at 170 centimeters, that's like five, six. So they aren't the tallest horses in the world per se. They're, you know, fairly small. So I mentioned in the last video that I felt like it didn't do it justice, but I feel like they probably got the size of the horse um, pretty right, if not even just a little bit too big. Um, and it is a really thick horse and that is something that I believe is accurate with the horse because it says they weigh anywhere from like 900 to a thousand pounds. So they're a super big horse. Um, but one other fact that I read about that I thought was interesting, um, I mentioned with the last Suffolk punch that one of the facts that I read that I thought was interesting was that they're actually endangered. Um, and one of the things that I read is they're often criticized, um, as pulling horses and kind of. The, you know the competitions they compete in they're they're criticized during those competitions because they often are criticized for having small hooves relative to their body size where when you think of you know it's Clydesdale like from like the Budweiser commercials like pulling the you know wagons and stuff like they have these huge like hairy hooves that just look massive um, and not only that their bodies are massive too and it looks you know proportionate and with some of the um, some of the pictures and stuff I saw, it definitely did look like they do have, you know, smaller feet than a Clydesdale and pretty skinny and small feet compared to, you know, their, their body size. Um, I'm doing this in the same area because I, I feel like, um, so I guess moving on from, you know, a little bit of information about the Suffolk punches. Um, I did this area just cause I feel like it, it matches these two horses. Well, um, I wish that you could, you know, cut the hair, incredibly short or uh braid the tail and then kind of like fold it up so it does look like just a polling horse that you're you know you wouldn't really ride a polling horse like that but you know to make it look similar to that like what they're they're used for um but i just kind of feel like they look like they're you know sorrel and chestnut colored horses so they they kind of just look like a pretty generic horse but just on the on the larger side um one of the things about this specific horse that I was looking forward to, and um, unfortunately I have to say that I am a little disappointed with, was I've mentioned that with the Tennessee Walker, um, the Buckskin Tennessee Walker is a horse that I believe has a chance to make it into my you know top ten at the end of this series as one of my you know every you know the horses that I that I keep for Red Dead Online, um, and I was I mentioned um, in the last Tennessee Walker video that I was a little bit frustrated with. The fact that I couldn't have that horse with a little bit better stats, like the the one that costs gold. I wish that I could have the chestnut Tennessee Walker, but with the gold horse's stats. 
Um, so I was, I was interested for this horse because this horse looks similar to that. It's, it's coat is, you know, categorized as sorrel, but it's, you know, pretty much a, a chestnut colored horse. Um, and so I was, I was curious because I was like, okay, well maybe because this one looks the same, it looks like a pretty generic horse. And that's what I want to go for because I think some of the coats in the game are pretty, um, not unrealistic, but uncommon when it comes to just, you know, a horse that an everyday person would own. And so that's why I, you know, want to have the chestnut Tennessee Walker. And this one looks similar to that. So I thought, well, you know, if I really like this horse, maybe this one could replace the Tennessee Walker. But unfortunately, after riding this one and the, um, the chestnut one, the red, I think it's red chestnut one. Um, I don't think either of these horses is going to make it into my top 10 of my stable. Um, I don't know if that is due. I, I've been trying to kind of, I guess, figure out exactly what has caused that or why I feel that way about these horses. And I honestly think it comes down to the handling. Um, I'm going to share a clip here. Um, I'll insert it here in just a second and I'll say when I'm going to insert it. I'm not going to do any voiceover of it. I'm just going to share the clip. I had an experience where this ho with this horse where I think I got launched further and higher than I ever have before from running into a fence. I was going, you know, as fast as I could trying to return a resupply to my, my camp. So I was going fast. I was riding through the trees. I was being careless, but it was a fence that I didn't see because it was at the top of a hill, but I fully expected, you know, if I came upon a little fence that the horse would jump over it, it didn't. And I hit it and I went flying. So I'm going to insert that clip here. All right, so as you saw, I got absolutely launched. Um, and I just remember like it happening and just laughing and thinking, what in the heck just happened? Um, but yeah, so I've been trying to, you know, I've been trying to figure out why it is that I haven't liked these uh, Suffolk punches very much. And I do think it's due to the handling. It just feels a little unresponsive. It feels like I put the input in the controller for it to move and like a second, if not a half a second later, it does the motion. So I just think it's handling is a little bit unresponsive, which, you know, makes sense for, for such a big horse. Um, but just me personally, it's not something that I like. Um, if I liked the horse enough and I liked the coat of the horse enough, I could see, um, you know, justifying it and looking past it. But I just don't, I just don't totally love the way these horses look. Um, I do like to have a bigger horse. Um, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not totally sold on it. So it's not something that I think that I would, um, you know, sacrifice, you know, one of 10 stable slots for if I'm not absolutely in love with the horse, which I'm not. So, um, so like I mentioned with the last one, again, I don't, I don't think that the, um, the stats or, you know, the way they act around predators or during combat changes from coat to coat. I think it changes from breed to breed, definitely. Uh, but I don't think it changes based on the coat of the horse. Um, so like I mentioned with the last uh, Suffolk Punch, these horses do perfectly fine in combat. Um, it's actually, it's, it's like, I know it doesn't have any better stats than the riding horses, but it's just fun to go flying into combat on a big horse and just, just run people over. Um, and so that's what I found myself doing a lot. And so I really enjoyed these, these two horses in combat, but the area that I found the most difficulty in was with predators. I mentioned that in the last one, in the red chestnut one, that it felt similar to how the riding horses felt, but now I want to take that back. And I want to say that this horse is definitely worse than any of the riding horses, maybe comparable to the Morgan. I don't really remember the Tennessee Walker or the Kentucky Saddler, um, you know, making my camera rotate like this when I was around a predator. Also it going sideways to turn its head to be able to see the predator. I don't totally remember them doing that. I feel like I do remember the Morgan doing that, 
but with this one, maybe I just ran into more predators. I feel like I was doing my very best to calm the horse as best as I could, but it just seemed like it was nearly uncontrollable when it came to, to running into a predator. So they don't do well with predators. They're fun in combat. Um, this is a small thing, but I don't know if, if everyone has noticed, but horses have a different sort of like tone to their, their, you know, noises they make. And some of the bigger horses like the Breton, um, the Ardennes, um, those different horses have a really deep, um, and I think even the Shire does as well. They have really deep sounding noises they make and it just, it just feels and sounds cool. I was totally expecting this one to have similar because it is such a big horse, but this one actually doesn't. It actually, um, it actually is, has the same sort of vocal tone as a lot of the riding horses did. I believe the Morgan is on a higher, uh, like a higher pitch vocal tone than the riding horses in this one, but it, they're not as deep as the, you know, like the Ardennes and the Breton. So that was a little bit disappointing to me. And that's like the very, very first thing I noticed with the red chestnut horse was I was expecting it to be like super deep and throaty sounding, but it, it wasn't, it would, it sounded just like the other riding horses, which was a little bit disappointing because if I have a big horse, I want it to sound like big and, and strong and, um, I don't know, just sort of a, I guess just another role playing aspect of the game. But yeah, um, I just, I realized I hadn't really ran the horse as fast as I could. So I'm just doing that right now. Um, another thing, I don't know if the drain rate is, um, higher on this horse. I'm not using the Nacogdoches saddle. Um, I used it throughout using the horse, but then I switched to this one just for the look. So I'm not taking that into account, but I do feel like these horses stamina drains quicker. I don't know if that was an actual thing with the horses, but, um, yeah. So Thank you all so much for watching. Um, I believe that the next horse, we're still in the draft category. We will be for two more breeds. Um, I was thinking the Shire was next, but I actually believe that it is the Belgian draft horse that is next. So this is a horse that I have zero experience with. I have never ridden one in story mode or um, online. So I'm pretty excited to do the Belgian draft, but um, yeah. Thank you all so much for watching and I will catch you all in the next video.